This right here may be the worst financial decision I've ever made. Don't get me wrong, I've made a lot of bad financial decisions, but this one here may have topped all of them. Now allow me to explain. I paid $23,000 for this 2023 BMW M240i in this condition. And I know $23,000 may sound like an absurd price for a vehicle in this condition, but factoring in the fact that this has only 4,000 miles, it's a 2023, and it is an M240, it's worth around $55,000. $55,000, that is if this car was a clean title and since I bought this car off the auction and has been previously in an accident, it's gonna have a branded title and it's probably gonna be worth around 45 realistically. None of this stuff here scared me until I went to start the car and the car just sounded extremely funny. So I added some oil to the vehicle and I saw this. Well, I hope you're having a great day. If you have not seen the video of me taking delivery on my M240, go check that out right now. There's gonna be a little link that pops up. I do have a couple of updates. I did not pay much attention to two of these stickers here from IAAI until I realized that I probably should. So let's kind of debunk a little bit of something. Look at this. The first time it came to the auction was January. And as you guys can see by these pictures, the car had bumpers. So now everything gets really, really, really interesting. So look at this. Run and drive starts, engine starts video, and it, these are checked off. And then it went back to the shop, I'm assuming. They took off the bumpers there, and it came back with this label here. And now we have a big red X on all of this. So now I'm a little bit confused. Confused or not, there's not much I can do about it at this point. It's either I fix the car or scrap it. And obviously I'm trying to fix it, but if it's like way too extensive of a damage on the motor, I'm not sure if it's gonna make any financial sense, which let's go ahead and find out. Here we have a cherry picker, an engine hoist, and shout out to my neighbor Dave for watching my videos and hooking me up and letting me use his engine hoist. So let's go ahead and prop that under the car, lift the engine up, see what we can see. Brainstorming on how I was going to do this, I removed the airbox to get a better view of what was going on. I got the engine hoist all set up and saw this little hook here from what I understood was to pick up the engine. I got everything set up and everything's looking good so far, but believe it or not, I have never pulled out an engine. I just hope I'm doing it right. I removed this airbox to show you guys a little bit better view of what's going on. You guys see the motor mount right there? popped off from right here. I'm gonna go ahead and try to put it back on this place. Oh man, the motor is literally floating in here. This is kind of sick and sketchy at the same time. Um, I think it's time we go under and take a look. Maybe crank it up just a little bit more. Oh yeah, like that. Let's see. Oh yeah, it's definitely floating in there. Trust me, I know what you're thinking, that all of this could be done 10 times easier with a lift. I understand that, that's not the case right now. I was not expecting this motor to be <clears throat> leaking oil <laughs> the way it is. So uh, just bear with me. So we are seeing some good news so far until I realized that this B or whatever this is kind of stepped on the wrong territory. Look at that, literally just made a, what, what even is that? Look at that though, we got some kind of damage. That is the oil pan and that hit the steering rack. So what I'm thinking right now is I gotta take off this entire, see the thing is moving? I gotta take it off, but to remove it, there's a couple of clips and everything and I just hope it slides out that way because I can't really see it going anywhere else. Let's go ahead and pull that off and maybe we'll finally reveal what the damage is. Good news though, is that these motor mounts, they did not break off from the engine. See if I can get you a good visual right there. A lot of times they break off right here and basically the block is garbage. But it seems like both of them are still intact on this side and on this side there. So that's really, really good news. I'm really hoping it's the oil pan right now. And as much as I can hope it is the oil pan, I am still absolutely freaked out. We are on the verge of finding out if this can be fixed cost effectively, or will I need to purchase a whole new motor that's nearly $10,000? That will absolutely blow the budget out the door for this car. We're halfway done removing this, and I already hear some kind of metal shavings under this piece right here. So see if I can get this fully out show you guys what that is in there. Ah. Let's 
be. Oops. Oh, there's another clip here. Gosh. All right. Let me get that clip. Now this thing should come out. Oh, yes. All right. You guys ready for the moment of truth? Because I am. Is there anything here? Any kind of damage on this thing? All right, so on this thing, we see something here, something here, something here, something here. Flip side, ooh, right there and right there. That's like the biggest impact. Crossing my fingers, crossing my toes, hoping that it's the best case scenario. Let's go under. I'm scared. Are you scared? Because this is a big, big potential money loss. Or whoa, it's a freaking bee right there, yo. Yo, I ain't touching that. Get out of there, homie. Yo. This is not even funny. There's literally bees flying back into under the car, basically their home. Look at that. Yo. Dude, if I get bit by one of these suckers, that's not gonna be a joke. What the? There's so many of them. I don't know what to do. <laughs> They're literally probably trying to go home, but it's not home no more. Excuse me, sir. You are evicted from here. You have not paid your rent, buddy. Get out. Get out. Get out. Where you at, though? Yo, rent's due. Get out. It's first month. FBI, open up! Are you kidding me? Yeah, I'm, I'm literally scared to get under the car. Yo, there's another one. Look at this. Hey, yo, homie, chill. <laughs> Oh gosh. All right, we're going in. I'm stepping into harm's way for you guys, so you guys better like this video. If I get bit, you guys are gonna see a little <laughs> trip to the hospital. No, jokes aside, okay, let's start looking at the engine pan, the oil pan. Uh, I see some fresh oil right there. Ooh, <laughs> I see something, I see something. Let's see if I can get it. Ooh, right there, look at that. Look at that beautiful thing right there. Okay, so that's the oil pan. So honestly, so far, that's like the best thing that can happen is that little crack or hole. That's so far. Let's see if we can continue. Oh, I'm getting happy. I'm getting real happy right now. Let's see, let's see, let's see. Everything's good here. Let's see. Oh, nice. What in the world? I saw another hole. There's another one right there. Look at that. So there's two holes. There's one right there and one right there. Okay, so we got two holes so far. Not too bad, they're both in the oil pan, so that's not too big of a deal. Besides those two holes, the only other damage I see on the oil pan is this crack right here. Right there's a crack and that's it. So I'm not too worried about that. This is some very, very good news because it doesn't seem like the engine itself got any damage. Only thing I'm kind of worried about is, am I able to take this off without actually having to separate the motor from the transmission? I'm not sure. We're gonna go ahead and give it a try. And, oh, <laughs> look what I just noticed. Look at that. That looks like the AC canister. Oh my goodness. So we have a lot of damage just from the fact that the engine got shifted over so much. So we got that up there that needs to be ordered, that, and then, um, I think the steering rack is bad. Well, the steering rack, oh my gosh, look at that. Well, the steering rack is definitely broken and a lot of components to the engine um, motor mounts. So I guess like there's two pieces, the bottom one and then the one that actually mounts to the chassis or not the chassis, the one that mounts to the chassis and the one that mounts to the engine. I also did notice that this engine was shifted this way, which means that this thing punctured a hole in my radiator reservoir, radi coolant reservoir right there. So that needs to be replaced. And I'm just gonna go ahead and start taking a look at everything under there, seeing if I can identify anything else that is damaged. Yes, I'm so relieved right now that the actual engine is not damaged and it's just the oil pan. I'm hoping that oil pan comes off easy, but you know, with the motor being shifted so much to the driver's side of the vehicle, not only those little components could be damaged, we could have possibly damaged the transmission because when I was driving it off, 
just wasn't acting how it should. And I'm thinking that it's either the transmission or either the rear left wheel axle that's torn out. So let's just continue digging. In order for me to get back to the transmission, I needed to lift the car higher. And to do that, I needed to let go of the engine hoist that was holding the engine, pick up the car, and then pick the engine back up. Then I took off the cover that hides the transmission, which was held on by a couple of size 10 millimeter screws. And there it was, exactly what I thought. Well, it almost seems like I've been under here and know exactly what's going on, but I don't. This is my first time taking a look at this. I just knew something was funny going on and take a look at that. These are the oil return lines and sender lines to the transmission and it's broken. You guys can see that right there is the driver's side. So the motor got shifted this way, impacting this against the rail and damaging it. So these lines, they extend all the way to the front of the vehicle. I got to see where they connect, but we got to make sure that this is the only thing that's damaged and we got to make sure that there's no holes in the actual transmission. Let's see if I can take that off and um, see if that's replaceable. And not only this piece is damaged, I just noticed that this bolt here, that seems to be a transmission, like a bracket or a mount of some sort, just got <laughs> shaved clean off. Look at that, pretty crazy. And before I remove that little piece on the transmission, I needed to empty out my oil catch tub, just in case when I remove that piece, a bunch of oil starts dumping out of the transmission. That is disgusting. Now we go under the vehicle and remove that little piece, which turns out to be a thermostat for the transmission. Upon further inspection, I am very happy because these lines are not damaged at all. And the only thing that is damaged is this piece right here. So that's probably gonna be a lot cheaper than these lines because I looked up these lines, one of them is like 180 bucks. Honestly, I think that's the end of our damage um, as for how far back it went on the vehicle because you know if you think about it, the engines up here, we have the transmission, and the further back, the further back from the engine, the less movement it actually had. So the transmission moved just about two inches, engine moved four inches, and the differential back there possibly moved an inch or something. So I don't think we have any damage to back there. And this makes enough logical sense to why the transmission wasn't acting the way it should. And honestly, this is probably the best case scenario. I'd rather replace this little thing that takes five minutes to replace than replace those tubes that go all the way to the front of the engine. Right now, what we gotta do though, is basically just make a huge parts list. That's really it. And a lot of you guys are asking, how do I make parts list? Well, I'll show you guys. But this is the way I do it. So we start with the most important stuff. What is the most important stuff? The engine. Well, we got a little break. All right, let's leave that M240 alone for now and take a look at our Nardo R7, see what the progress is with it because I was told that it's already getting welded on the quarter panel. So, yo, this is our man right here, the man of the hour. How you doing? Uh, How you doing, bro? What do you, what you got going on here? I can see we're almost done. Yo, no way. Look at this though. Oh, I thought that was the original door for a second. <laughs> <There's> the original. <laughs> I was like, what the heck? I'm like, why is that like off color so bad? But in real life, it's not this bad. Oh, there you go. It looks like that in real life. So I was like, what in the world? Anyways, let's look at these gaps. Yo, Tony, dude. Look at that. This guy busted this thing out in a couple of days. Last time I was here, when was that? Like three days ago? Yeah, it was like Monday, Tuesday. Tuesday. No way. And look at this. We finally got... Uh, almost complete looking Audi R7 that's in like seven different colors, but that's not a big deal. Can we close the trunk or no? Is it? Um, no, the battery is disconnected. Can I connect it? Yep. So, let's see. Dang. All right, let's see. Moment of truth. Moment of truth, yo. This gap better be solid. Let's see. Okay. Okay, look at that. Dang. That's some pristine work right there. Tony, can you explain why this is going on like this? I mean, this is not factory OEM gaps right here. What's going on? It's because we don't have the factory exhaust OEM. What do you mean? Like here. Oh, okay, I see. Uh -huh. So you're saying that this is pushing. No, you're not saying it actually really is pushing. Okay, so if we push this up. Uh-huh, there you go. There you go. I like that. That looks nice in OEM. Also, what are we doing down here? We're gonna fix it somehow, yeah? What do you think? Some glue. Well, I trust you. Some hole. 
Hope. Yeah. Now that we got the new quarter panel on, well, Tony did, not me. I want to show you guys how bad the alignment actually was. Look at that, or actually is right now. And I drove the car like this here, so that's pretty sketchy. just left Tony's place we picked up some more parts um, from the RS7 because it doesn't have much storage room actually no I'm gonna correct that that's not Tony's place Tony's using that shop for the time being because he doesn't have a shop at the moment uh, he's looking for a shop he just left his other shop because they literally tripled his rent from like 2200 to like 6,000 or something like that it's just something absurd so he's like yeah I'm not gonna stay there but anyways uh, let's go uh, work on the M240 all right, so we are now finally at the part where we make a part list for the vehicle, which is a green sign already because it means we are in the direction of repairing the vehicle. I don't know about any other rebuilders or anything, but this is the way I make a parts list. I prioritize it like this. So first things first is engine. Make sure the engine runs, starts, and has oil, it can hold oil. So I'm gonna order all the components for that. Next is the transmission. After that, um, it is the cooling, so the radiator system. Make sure all the radiators are good, all that stuff is good. After that, it is suspension. Suspension and cooling is kind of like on the same, same ballpark, you know what I'm saying? Make sure the vehicle rolls, drives, turns, and stuff like that. Then we can go to the body and the airbags because that's already kind of cosmetic. But let's get right into it. So here I'm just writing down part numbers of the parts I need. If I can see the part numbers, I'll write them down. That way I'm 100% confident this is the correct part. This is a brand new 2023 car, so chances are they might not have this car in their catalog for the part research. In order for me to get a better look at all the parts needed, I needed to take out this coolant reservoir and just kind of disassemble and take a good look all around here because I really don't know to what extent the damage went. As for the front, the parts list, we are basically done. We aren't doing the fender, bumper, headlight, stuff like that. We're doing crucial stuff to make this thing run and warm up. I want to make sure it runs, it warms up, and everything is safe before I start dumping probably another, I don't know, three, four thousand dollars into body parts to make this thing look good. But I gotta make sure it's mechanically sound prior to that. We got all these parts. Next thing we gotta do is take off that wheel and see if the axle or anything serious is damaged over there. I know I just said $3,000 worth of parts for it to look cosmetically good, but honestly, I don't know what I was thinking. Maybe it bee bit me or something because it's more like seven, 8,000. Headlight alone is 1,500. And then door, rocker panel, bumpers, grills, interior airbags, I don't know. Um, as for the rear suspension, it doesn't look like we have much damage. I'm looking at this one piece that's damaged. The lower one here is damaged. And then that strut is pushed right there and I just looked it up and they share parts with the Supra and they're very very fairly priced so I wrote all those parts down we're just gonna go ahead and order them and once they come we'll change them out Well, there's a list. By the way, I don't wear glasses. These are blue light blockers. When I edit, it helps a lot. So, this is the get ASAP list, meaning we need these parts ASAP, and we need them to see if we're gonna buy all of these parts. And then after we get these parts, there's all the cosmetic, the bumpers and all that fun stuff. So, transmission, thermostat, oil pan, throttle housing, one motor mount, and one motor mount bracket. So. Uh, anyways, one of them was broken, one of them was not, and then the bracket on the one that was broken and one of them was not. Coolant reservoir, auxiliary radiator, the cage that holds this radiator, AC bottle thingy, I don't know what it is, I can post up a little B-roll right here, and the steering column top sensor from what I'm, I think that's what it is. And then the can weight, if we have money part, is going to be the beam bumper bottom, the little aluminum piece, air duct, inner and outer tie rods, lower control arm, and this is just basically suspension components. 
So let's go ahead and hop on the computer and see how much all of these parts cost. This is kind of all the unseen parts, at least most of them. We already ran into an issue. So that's the number of the VIN code of the vehicle. I typed it in on the BMW page, nothing comes up. Typed it in on one of my favorite part searching websites, Parts Link 24. It's a paid website, but I absolutely love it. Nothing there. The, the, the entered VIN could not be assigned to a distinct model. And then this is another one I use, ilcats.ru. Type in the VIN, VIN not found. Well, all of that just makes the part research 10 times harder. Luckily, I did write down most of the part numbers on my phone. So let's see if we can search up everything by that. I don't know how, but magically the Parts Link 24 website identified my VIN number and showed me the entire catalog of parts, which made my research job 100 times easier. I still ended up confirming all the part numbers from the website to the ones I had written down on my phone, and they were all correct. The first thing I do when looking for parts is type in the part number on Google and see who has it for cheapest. It's interesting because sometimes dealerships may have parts cheaper than eBay. Then I typically make lowball offers on eBay and see who accepts. Just as I was looking for parts, my offers on the oil pan and on the auxiliary radiator got accepted. So that's awesome. Look at that 350 bucks and 125. So close to getting finished. This is the last part on our must get ASAP list and we kind of ran into an issue because this is the rack here and that part right there does not sell individually. There's nothing that I can like number seven. I can't even highlight that. And if we go here, you guys can see there's no number seven here. If we go to number one, which is the actual rack, we press on it. Ah. Uh, my only hope is that this cap may be potentially it and it's only $30. I might just send it and risk it, but I really doubt that's it. Well, now if we tally all these numbers up, we can kind of see how much damage we didn't see when we were buying the car and we didn't really estimate on. This steering column here may potentially be a $3,000 repair, which I hope is not. So uh, let's tally this up. Drum roll, $1,736 we are, I guess maybe over budget or didn't estimate for. So yeah, good luck bidding on auction. Well, with all that being said, if you guys have any G42 parts, please let your boy know because I'm about to break my piggy bank just restoring this vehicle. And I'm still at a point like, okay, I'm gonna fix the oil pan, do all this stuff, but is the motor still good? Like, will it hold compression? And yeah, we're gonna have to find that out in the next episode. If you guys enjoyed this episode, thank you so much for watching. I love each and every single one of you guys. Don't forget to smash that like button and subscribe if you guys wanna see more. Peace.